Hey guys, welcome back. And today, let's talk about this. The firearms. However, in this video, actually the main character is not from Japan. It's about the firearms of the Qing Dynasty of China. So why I put this Japanese video as my video's intro? Actually, there are two reasons. The first one is that the Japanese metalog archivists have some relation with the Chinese Qing Dynasty firearms. Another reason is a little unfortunate. Until now, except for some history films about the Ming Dynasty or Qing Dynasty which showed up the typical Chinese firearms and their shooting scenes, but they are movies after all. I don't believe those actors can use a totally real gun, real black gunpowder, and real bullets on their film sets just like those Japanese shooters shooting with their matchlock mask in this video. They are built in the traditional way, so although those Japanese firearms are built in modern times and are not ancient arms, they still can show the, the real shooting scenes and the feeling of the battlefield hundreds of years ago. In Chinese language, there are many words to express the firearms, such as before the Qing Dynasty, Chong, Huo Chong, Niao Chong, etc. are the popular used words to express firearms. In Qing Dynasty, many we can see the word changed to Niao Qiang, and in Manchu language is Miao Chong. But why was there a change? In my opinion, I guess maybe it's because in the mid 17th century, Ming Dynasty had a war with later Jin, which is the early name of the Qing Dynasty. During the war time, Ming's firearms, Niao Chong, were captured by Qing's army and based on the sword of Niao Chong. Then it might be named Miao Chong. Finally, Manchu Yuan won the war and built the Empire of Qing. Manchu language is the language of ruler. But the Chinese language is the most popular language. When the history recorded, the word firearms in Chinese language didn't want to use the word of the Ming Dynasty that was defeated by Qing, so finally changed to Niao Qiang according to the sword of Manchurian, Miao Chang. Nowadays, more would like to use Huo Qiang to express the firearms, including flintlock guns and matchlock guns. Niao means bird, and qiang means gun. So, if directly to translate niao qiang, which means bird gun or the shooting bird gun, but actually niao qiang is just the name for those old-time gunpowder weapon. Hunting is one of the function of niao qiang, but more of the time, it is a weapon for the soldiers. When we talk about the qiang firearms, there is a point that we can't miss. It is the Indo Portuguese type matchlock and the Indian type matchlock, which also can be called Central Asian type, just like the train diagram for those different types of firearms. We're going to detail in a later chapter. So now let's firstly watch some Royal Niao Qiang of the Qing Dynasty. Because those old firearms are preserved while refined and the virus from those weapons. We can see that, except for several flink lock and wheel lock guns, most of the firearms are match lock, so that match lock type is our key object. Now, at this time, we can put another picture, and this is the Turkish match lock, or be called Ottoman match lock. This is a prototype of the Indian type. We can compare the Qing type and the Ottoman type. We can find that both looks have almost the same mechanical structure. Then this is the typical Indian type. Plus, in the North India and the Nepal area, it even has a variant, which is a gun that has a part just like a branch on the musket. And that special part actually is the bipope of the gun. This kind of bipope also appeared on the Qing musket. By comparing it with the Turkish type and the Indian type, it may clearly infer that the Qing matchlock is from them. Besides, there is another branch of gun origin. Purely on those kind of firearms, they have a spring part on the matchlock's body. That is the Indo-Portuguese type, the Fletcher. Hundreds of years ago, Portuguese arrived in India 
with their firearms, then after many years, the Portuguese continued their expansion on the sea. So their matchlock muskets entered the channel about in 16th to 17th century. But by some research, Portuguese matchlock muskets into China might be later than the time of Central Asian muskets into China. So in China, we can see two kind of muskets at the same time. By the way, in the 16th century, Indo-Portuguese muskets also entered Japan. In the Qing Dynasty, the matchlock was used until the mid 19th century. So now, fortunately, we still can see the photos of the soldiers holding those matchlock muskets. From the photos, the soldiers' matchlock guns are not as delicate as the royal guns, obviously. In the Qing Dynasty, there are many variants of firearms. Specifically, there are four kinds of varieties Jiao Qiang, Hua Qiang, Xian Qiang, and Qi Qiang. But because of the lack of scientific sorting, those four kinds of firearms are really similar. From the picture of Huang Chao Li Qi Tu Shi, we can clearly see that point. It isn't like nowadays, the snap rifle is just a snap rifle, the DMR is just a DMR. However, from the firearm shape and some different parts, we still can distinguish some different types. So, I tried to sum up those types. First is the short handle type and the long handle type. They have very clear difference in their bodies. Meanwhile, the short handle type mostly as a type for the Qing's official army, and the long type may be the Hongdi type. Second, is a without gun by pop time and with gun by pop time. The latter type also be called the Cha de Qing, because the by pop seems like a fork or a branch, and in Chinese, it was called Qiang Cha. Not only in Qing's official army, but the Tibetan soldiers and the hunters this type of firearm was often used by them. Gradually, the Cha De Qing also became a representation of the old Tibetan soldiers. Then is the Central Asian type and the Portuguese type. The obvious difference is the matchlock mechanism. The former's design is simpler and the latter has a clear spring on the gun's body, which is the key feature of the Portuguese type. And just like the Japanese musket, plus the Japanese type is the most important and the most famous in the Portuguese type firearms family. Finally, is the Gen type and the normal type. The normal type is just those normal size firearms for single soldiers, and the Gen type is far larger than the normal size. And if someone wants to use it, he has to need two soldiers together to operate it. Actually, it also has another name, Tai Qiang, means the gun which needs to raise. In fact, Europe, India, and Japan also have this kind of large firearm, which is not totally the same, but it's similar. That is a war gun. Now, when we say a Qiang Niao Qiang, just like this, we can know that this is a short handle Portuguese without gun by pop, normal type. And the Swedo cover is long handle Central Asian with gun by pop normal type. In addition, for those firearms, the barrel bands are a little different. Some of them are used by the metal, and another part of them are used by the cotton or some other material thread. Even some royal firearms barrel bands also has this kind of thread. I remember several years ago, I read an article about why Qing's army used the stride as the barrel band. They also inferred that it's because the stride actually is strong enough and it can make changing the barrel easier. As a kind of firearms from 200 years or 300 years ago, its shape also is very different from the modern rifles. So some action to use the firearms are not very same. Nowadays, if we want to know how those soldiers use those weapons, 
they have to find it from the ancient books. During the hundreds of years, very fortunately, there is a hundred eighty years old book that survived. In this book, not just the way of how to use firearms, but there are many other weapons training ways. According to this book, except for pulling the trigger and the way of aiming the object by the arrow size are the same as the modern way, we can find the other actions are little different with no the way of using a gun. The standard stand is that, straightening both legs, and the face is T-shaped, so her hip bone rests a little bit, and then the elbow, which links and holds the grab and the trigger, need to be really close to the waist. Finally, let the grab in the position where it is close to the people's face but moving back a little bit. Then, fire it. When I searched for information and photos, I unexpectedly found an old photo. We can compare it with this old training book. At this time, we can see that this real photo seems a standard action of using the Tai Qian. Okay, now today's brief story of Jiao Qiang is almost to the end. But in the video, I want to share with you guys one of my dreams about this old gunpowder weapon. When I was a teenager in high school, I suddenly found the videos of a Japanese team presenting and shooting their firearms. When I watched that, just like a time travel to the black powder time and history likely revived from the textbook, gradually a dream was shaping up. It is to show with the Chinese Yao Qiang. I think it is the thing about history, culture, and the future, just like those Japanese teams presenting all the mosques to the people. History is able to be not just a picture on the book. You can see that and feel that, especially for the children to know the history by learning based on experience themselves. But this would be a big history project, letting those collections in museums to become an alive history. But rebuilding an ancient firearm also needs some special skill, such as aerosmith skill and carpenter skill. I don't know if this extreme is a realistic project. Maybe one day it will come true. Although maybe the Qing Dynasty missed the opportunity to change the firearms from matchlock without the bayonet to flintlock with a bayonet, but history and we can't change it. Maybe it's because of the special history, so the firearms, as one part of the history, now have become another unique cultural luxury for the world. Thank you for watching this video, which is really longer than before. I hope you can like this video. Happy New Year. See you next time.